everyone. While journeying on horseback one day, St. Benedict met a peasant walking along the road. You've got an easy job, said the peasant. If I became a man of prayer like you, then I too would be travelling on horseback. You think praying is easy, replied the saint. If you can say one hour, Father, without any distractions, you can have my horse. It's a bargain, said the surprised peasant. Closing his eyes and folding his hands, he began to say the Our Father aloud. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Suddenly he stopped short and looked up. Can I have the saddle and bridle too? Distractions don't just apply to prayer. We heard in the reading there, for instance, that Martha was distracted with all the serving. But our minds can be preoccupied by so much trivia that reflecting on the deeper questions of life don't get a look in. I always feel that Mary and Martha's home was a place where Jesus could get away from it all, put his feet up and rest his weary bones for a few hours. The Bible tells us that Jesus loved Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. Maybe that was because they gave him space to unwind, to rest. Now, since holiday time is here, I'm sure today's gospel was chosen for this very reason. But even whilst on, on a break, some people are forever on the tear. They can't sit still. The gospel today tells us that Mary sat down at the Lord's feet. All of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone wrote the French philosopher Blaise Pascal. Can we at least put down our electronic devices, our phones, our brain-numbing activities for a few minutes and try to sit quietly alone somewhere? We're told Sheffield is quite a polluted city with high levels of carbon dioxide, but there's another kind of pollution. It's the almost constant noise and din around us. I was shopping in a big Tesco store recently and the music being played over the loudspeaker was so loud it was bordering on the uncomfortable. I'm sure when historians settle on a phrase to describe our period of history, they'll call it the Age of Distractions. On the standard supermarket shelf, for instance, Instead of there being one or two of everything, we're spoiled for choice, which can tire us out. Variety can be the spice of life, but it can also deaden our spirits. What it means is that we have neither the time nor the inclination to raise our minds to God and the transcendent. Even Sunday rest seems to be the exception these days. The saying... No rest for the wicked is indeed believable. The author of Psalm 23 describes how God is asking him to sit by the restful waters in order to revive his drooping spirit. Jesus, as I already said, he loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus, so he gently chides Martha for, all, for allowing herself to be distracted by so many Secondary considerations. Yes, we all need food to survive. Even Jesus did. But it should not take precedence over nourishing the spirit. as a place for everything and a time for everything. Listening to Jesus and his words of wisdom was quality time for Mary. Reflecting on his life-giving words will revive our jaded spirit as well. Now thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.